Hello and welcome to the third presentation in the 2022 Doctoral Student Support Webinar Series sponsored by Aspen and United States University. Today's presentation is called Feedback, the Currency of Success. And we are so honored to have Dr. Eva Ballard, the Dean of the School of Education at Aspen University with us today. She has over 20 years of experience in K through 12 and post-secondary education. She's a certified teacher and administrator with expertise in developing teacher leadership, licensure, and advanced degree programs in post-secondary education. Her research interests include quality K through 12 teacher and administrator preparation, as well as developing specific strategies for assessing the effective teacher and school leader. Eva, without further ado, go ahead and take it away. Thank you, Heather, for that introduction. I want to thank all of you for taking time out of your evening to join us today for our discussion on feedback. Yes, I am the Dean for the School of Education at Aspen University. I spent the first half of my career as an educator in K-12 education and the past 10 years or so in higher ed at my previous institution. Uh, my research focus was actually on virtual and online communication and feedback within the context of teacher training programs. In education, we often use this term continuous improvement when discussing feedback. We use this term as a way to conceptualize that nothing is perfect and there's always room to grow, right? So we give and receive feedback in all areas of our lives. Yes, including our doctoral programs, but also within our relationships with friends and family or colleagues in our work environment. So today's discussion will focus on a broad approach to creating a positive feedback experience within any of those scenarios and to observe feedback not as a bad thing, but as a way to transform our lives for the better. So let's take a look at the learning objectives for today's presentation. By the end of the presentation, you will know how to reframe the feedback process by changing your mindset, how to unlock the secret to turning feedback into action, and how to use feedback to achieve transformational growth and success. So the first thing I'd like us to do is to close our eyes just for a moment and think about a time when you received constructive feedback. How long ago was that experience? Who was it from? What was it in regard to? And how did that experience make you feel overall? Did you feel deflated, defensive? Or did you feel motivated and excited? Think about how you process that feedback. Did you solicit support from your family or friends? What action or specific steps did you take after the feedback was given to transform your behavior or your personal growth? Okay, open your eyes. And did, you, did your mind take you to one specific moment? Or did you have many to choose from? Did this exercise leave you feeling motivated or did you feel anxious? By reflecting on the way you personally frame constructive feedback as a negative or a positive experience, you will gain insight into how to adapt to feedback, learn to acknowledge negative emotions, constructively reframe fear and criticism, develop realistic goals and create support systems. So let's start when we're talking about feedback, let's talk about what it is and what it is not. Feedback is information about the past given in the present moment with the goal of influencing future behavior or performance. It's information that we are constantly giving or receiving whether we intend to or not. So what feedback is not? It's not coaching. Coaching is a relationship that uses feedback as a tool to help students grow. And it's not criticism. Criticism provides information on what behaviors or actions were wrong without offering solutions on how to remedy issues for the future. So feedback itself is information. And when we see it as such, we can remove any emotional attachment to it and use it to transform. 
Your relational and communication experiences are likely to be the most significant factor affecting how you accept feedback, as well as how comfortable others are in providing you feedback. So enhancing the quality of the communication and your relationships by building trust and establishing a positive rapport will allow you to feel safe within that relationship so you can stay open and vulnerable to hearing the feedback that's, that's being given. Our communication approach can often be a, a blind spot for many of us. Experts in emotional intelligence remind us that we tend to focus too much on what we say and ignore 93% of how we say it. So how we actually communicate to those around us through facial expressions, our eye contact, our tones, our undertones, our body language. And this is especially true for online communication. We have to overcome any potential misunderstandings because we're missing these key elements in communication. And so when you're thinking about your communication experiences, what energy do you bring when you join a conversation? What feelings do you naturally evoke when you start speaking with people? How does your presence make those around you feel? And how do others seem to feel when they bring a concern to you? By understanding our personal relational experiences, we can start to reframe how we approach feedback scenarios. So think about yourself honestly. Do you have a strong sense of self-knowledge? And when we talk about self-knowledge, we talk about personal, professional values, beliefs, needs, strengths, and weaknesses, your learning style and its relationship to your values, beliefs, needs, strengths, and weaknesses, how you impact others, and how your communication style fits with various circumstances and people. So how can we become more feedback friendly? Remain open to improving your self-knowledge. Be mindful of emotional responses that receiving or eliciting feedback may trigger for you and others involved. Prepare by anticipating your reactions and the reactions of, the, of others by practicing what you'll say and clarify expectations. Do you know what, you, what others want from you and what you want from them? So we can learn to adapt to feedback by changing the way that we look at it and by changing the mindset from which we perceive that feedback, we can change our experience with it. The first step is to respond versus react. Adopt the right mindset to improve the chance of feedback being well received. So recognizing your emotions and understand that what you're experiencing may be fear and that you're reacting to that fear. This is an essential step toward adapting toward adaptive change. Next is to solicit support. You can identify your emotions and which can be difficult and feedback that requires change in behavior can leave you feeling uh, ashamed, inhibited. So for these reasons, it's critical to ask for help from trusted friends who will listen, encourage, and offer suggestions. Reframing, so reframe the feedback. By reframing the feedback allows you to rebuild the feedback to your advantage. You observe the feedback as a learning tool and make the choice to see it in a positive light so that negative emotions and responses lose their grip. And use incentives. Use incentives to improve your performance by rewarding yourself whenever you take an important step in the process. This will encourage you to persevere. So, Earlier, I talked about continuous improvement. And when we think about a loop or a cycle of learning, feedback becomes the driving force that influences learning. In everyday life, feedback loops for each of us occur naturally, usually in the form of when I do X, Y happens. And again, feedback is information, but what you do with that information can determine your likelihood of success. So you can organize the feedback process in a loop following these uh, simple steps. Number one, you want to identify the goals and outcomes by ins and ensure that they're actionable. You think about SMART goals and um, think about those goals that you can achieve in a reasonable amount of time. 
The next step is to take steps toward achieving those goals. So take action, read, research, practice, seek out support. So do the work that comes from that feedback. And next, self-assess. How will you personally measure your learning? How will you know when your goals have been met? And next, teach others. This is a step that's often overlooked. If you want to learn something quickly, teach others how to do it. This uh, can be informal through discussions with peers, friends, or family. And next, you want to reflect on that process and consider what uh, additional work needs to be done and hold yourself accountable. And lastly, you want to solicit feedback. Am I on target with my intended learning outcomes? Am I meeting the goals in the eyes of others? Soliciting feedback. This is often easier said than done. Uh, some common reasons why we do not solicit feedback. Number one, we don't believe we need to ask. We don't see the value in seeking out additional information. Number two, we, fe we fear the answer. We're not confident enough to accept constructive feedback. Number three, we fear the person that we're asking or the consequences of asking. So we need to improve the relationship with the person giving feedback. And lastly, we don't know when or how. It's an, maybe a new idea for us to ask someone to offer more feedback. So when soliciting feedback, there are some do's and don'ts. Uh, let's focus on the do's first. You wanna explain the purpose or the goal when you're asking for feedback. Ask open-ended questions, be gracious, keep in mind that no one is perfect. You wanna respond rather than react, again, keeping the emotions uh, out of it. And then you wanna act on that feedback. So if you're asking for feedback, you wanna be sure you're doing something with it. And the don'ts, we don't wanna surprise uh, someone by asking for additional feedback. We don't wanna defend, explain, or rationalize ask intimidating questions, create a situation where someone feels backed into a corner, and we don't wanna get defensive. So if we disagree with the feedback, so the first thing that we wanna do, well, if we disagree with the feedback is to do nothing. You wanna hold off on deciding whether or not you actually agree with that feedback. We wanna give yourself time to understand the feedback more clearly before you accept or reject that feedback. Two, you wanna avoid looking for holes in the feedback because number one, you'll always be able to find something wrong with any feedback that's given. And number two, you're more likely to dismiss it too quickly. So you wanna avoid trying to find something wrong with the feedback that's given to you. Number three, you wanna dig a little bit deeper and try to go beyond those quick assumptions that about what a person is saying and explore how it might lead to other areas of growth. And so when you're thinking about feedback that's given to you, there might be uh, pieces of that feedback that could apply to other areas. And so you wanna really explore the bigger picture. You wanna explore the past and the future. Feedback is almost always, it almost always has a past and the feedback provider almost always is thinking about the future. So in a doctoral program, that could be the, the dissertation. That's our final culminating project in the doctoral program. You wanna assume that the provider might need help articulating what they mean. So asking clear and curious questions about the feedback. So, uh, you can recall, this is, what I'm, this is what I'm hearing you say, um, and then uh, have a dialogue about that feedback versus just accepting it at face value. And then lastly, we wanna check our blind spots. Sometimes feedback doesn't feel true because we're simply unaware of it. It sits squarely in our blind spot. And this is when you can ask for the support of family and friends to help 
um, help you to process the feedback that's being given in a way that is designed to help you grow and develop. So to conclude, and we can get more into this with our discussion, when we reframe the feedback process and change our mindset, it will allow us to process that feedback and use it as a tool to transform for the better. We want to improve our relationships and our communication by learning more about our blind spots. So what are those areas that we need to continue to improve on outside of our doctoral programs, um, just our personal uh, self-knowledge? How? What are our values, our beliefs? If we think back to that earlier slide. So by improving those relationships and the communication, that we have with all individuals in our lives, we can uh, feel more secure to be vulnerable in accepting that feedback. We wanna adapt to feedback by changing the way we observe the feedback process. So if we think about feedback as a continuous loop, simply information designed to help us grow, we'll be more likely to solicit feedback from others and use that information to help us grow versus thinking about it as a criticism, attaching negative emotions to it. And also by observing this feedback process in a positive way will allow us to have a positive uh, context from which we uh, perceive that information and develop uh, a process for, for change. We wanna turn feedback into action by establishing a feedback loop for learning. And this can be done on your own. It does not have to be done with somebody who's giving you regular feedback. So when you turn your feedback into a, a feedback loop, you're identifying actionable goals, you're, you're taking steps toward achieving those goals, you're assessing your progress, you're measuring your progress, and then you're evaluating that process by soliciting additional feedback. And then you start the process over again. And so that's the loop that we're talking about, that feedback loop for learning. And uh, that really is what leads to that exponential growth. When you're constantly taking that feedback, constantly taking steps and action towards change. And lastly, you wanna practice soliciting regular feedback to transform your behavior and achieve success throughout your doctoral journey. So get in the habit of asking for feedback. Get in the habit of soliciting regular feedback from your faculty, from your uh, faculty mentors, from your bosses, from your spouse, from your partners, from your family. And when, you, when you're in the habit, the positive habit of asking for feedback and asking for ways to, to grow and develop then you're in a constant state of continuous improvement. And that's what we strive to do in education. I just wanna highlight a few additional resources that are excellent for any of you who are looking for uh, additional support and how we give and receive feedback. Uh, the first one, Thanks for Feedback, The Science and Art of Receiving Feedback Well by Sheila Heen and Douglas Stone et al. Uh, the next one, Crucial Conversations. Uh, this one we use quite a bit in uh, higher education, Tools for Talking When Stakes Are High by Joseph Grenny, Carrie Patterson. The third one, The Feedback Fix, Dump the Past, Embrace the Future and Lead the Way to Change by Joe Hirsch. And lastly, The Fearless Organization by Creating Psycho Psychological Safety in the Workplace for Learning, Innovation and Growth by Amy Edmondson. So these are just uh, a few resources if you're interested in learning more. They're great to have in your, in your tool belt as you move through your uh, doctoral program. And uh, that concludes the information on feedback. So I would like to take this time that we have left over now and open it up for discussion and questions. I'm, I'm really excited to have all of you on this call.
so we can dive a little bit deeper and, and uh, get to some specific questions. During the question and answer period, we had a very lively and candid discussion with students who shared how some of the feedback they were getting in their doctoral program was making them feel. So talking about things like feeling inadequate, feeling like maybe they shouldn't move forward with the program. And Dr. Ballard reminded everyone to remember that feedback is simply information and was really encouraging these students to not think of it as though the feedback was bad or uh, sometimes I get positive feedback and then I get negative feedback, but to really just take all feedback as simply information. And when you develop that mindset, it's easier to approach it and engage with it in the spirit that it's being given to you to just always remember that your faculty are there to help you reach the goals that you need to reach in order to graduate. She also reminded everyone to please communicate with your faculty if the feedback is unclear and you're not sure what to do with it. Communication is such an important part of this process. Of course, persevere. Dr. Ballard reminded us that anything that is worth doing isn't easy. So to just keep moving forward. Of course, seek out resources. If you're getting feedback about something very specific, APA style, or your writing, seek out resources to help you improve those weaknesses that you may have that you need to build up in order to successfully complete your doctoral capstone project. Trust the process. Remember, everyone is here to help you succeed. And of course, build a supportive network, including specifically peers. And the conversation next month is going to talk specifically about this. Be sure to join us next month when Dr. Donald Dunn presents on building a supportive network. And don't forget the best way to find out about resources like these webinars is by following Aspen or United States University on your favorite social media platform. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next webinar.